Hi friends, welcome back to Free Circuit Lab. This is my digital multimeter which has a non-rechargeable 9 volt battery. It has a auto power off feature so no battery drain problem if I forget to turn it off. But the LCD light of it comes with a timer to save battery. But I want to make it always on so I must use a lithium battery or some kind of rechargeable battery. Out of curiosity, I have hooked a lithium battery up and it works fine without any modification. There is no drop in accuracy. The backlight works too but a bit dim this time. The only problem here is this low battery symbol. I have to get rid of it somehow. I have to hack it to show a little above 3 volt, which is the low threshold for a lithium battery. So I opened it and I got a beautiful board here. And this is the battery contacts. I will connect two wires here to power it from external source where I can vary the supply voltage. I found this symbol appears when the supply voltage goes below 5.8 volt, which is true for this type of battery but not for lithium cell. Let's also test how far we can go down without losing accuracy. Let's check the reading. We are going down. And now we are at 3 volt, the low threshold for lithium cell, but it still reads the same. Let's go further and at 2.5 volt it behaves crazy and starts itself down. So it can be used fine with a lithium battery. A quick note, it takes 2 milliamp of current while running. Let's connect a battery for some testing. I get two ICs here. Big one does not have a marking so we cannot find its spin out, but the smaller one does. It's an EEP ROM chip. The VCC on ground is at pin 8 and pin 4. Let's check the voltage. This is running at 3.3 volt. So there must be some voltage converter which is stepping down the battery voltage into 3.3 volt. Now to get an idea about the supply voltage of the big chip, I have tested some SMD capacitors nearby. These capacitors usually connect between VCC and ground to save it from other external noise. I got 3.3 volt at several points but got no voltage greater than that. Now I strongly believe that the whole system is running on 3.3 volt, which is a green signal for this modification. Let's dive deeper to collect some more information. The battery positive comes here, it goes to this point and then it goes to the other side of the board and connects here at this ring. Through the rotary switch it connects to the smaller ring where we get two holes to the other side of the board. One of them goes to this suspicious component which looks like a transistor and another one goes here and lost somehow. Let's check the suspicious thing. It gets battery voltage at a pin, another pin at ground and the third pin gives 3.3 volt. So it's probably a voltage regulator. Let's find the marking. It is HT33, a 3.3 volt low dropout voltage regulator. Perfect. Now let's find the lost test, a random continuity test and I got a B. It carries the battery positive to this register. The ground connects here with another register. The middle point of them are connected together and finally it goes to a one pin of the chip. So this forms a voltage divider through which the chip is looking to the battery voltage which is sitting behind the regulator. The battery minus has a series diode to give protection against reverse battery connection if somebody accidentally does that. That's a good thing but has a downside also. The diode drops 0.6 volt which is fine for higher voltage batteries like 9 volt but we must bypass it for a lithium cell to use the full range of it. The display backlight gets positive directly from the battery but negative goes here through this register and it connects to a transistor which is driven by the main chip. Now let's go back to the voltage divider. It gets 7.6 volt and ground and gives 1.6 volt to the controller chip. To find it out when the chip declares the low battery, I have powered it from 5.8 volt when the low battery symbol just appears. The divider is getting 5.2 volt and the output from it is 1.1 volt. The registers forming the voltage divider are 5 mega ohm and 1.5 mega ohm. If I simulate it in a software, I find 1.2 volt from it but my meter reads 1.1 volt. But why? That's because of the 10 mega ohm impedance of my meter which was parallel to 1.5 meg while measuring. Now we know this IC declares low battery when that pin goes below 1.2 volt. So I have to build another divider 
which does the same for 3.3 volt input voltage. Of course, to correctly represent the lithium battery cell, the new divider should have 100k and 56k. I have 100k in stock but don't have 56k, so I will connect a 47k and 10k in series. That will create the same effect. I will use this lithium battery, it's of 1800mAh, a lot for this meter. I had to find a suitable space for the battery and after trying a bit, I got it here. The battery being here, the cover fits nicely. Now the battery is ready with its divider, the negative, the positive and finally the sense wire. The old divider has very high resistances for saving power. I can easily overwrite it with my new divider without disconnecting any resistor. I have connected a 10 ohm in series with the positive. It will limit the current if something goes wrong in the circuit and it might protect the ICs from damaging. But it won't affect the normal operation of the meter because it needs only 2 mA of current. Now it's time to connect the battery. Positive goes here to this pad. Negative should be here but I will connect it here to bypass the voltage drop. Doing this, we are losing the reverse polarity protection, so we have to double check the plus minus before connecting. Ok, let's turn it on. Well, it works fine, but again with this symbol, because I did not connect the sense wire till now. Let's connect it and hope for the best. Ok, now it's connected, turning it on. And yes. I was right, that symbol is gone. I didn't test when the symbol comes back, but if you believe in my knowledge, it should be nearly 3.3 volt, which we wanted. I have applied hot glue everywhere where it can sort with the circuit board. Now finally it's time to do that for which we did all these. That is the backlight. Since it gets positive directly, I just have to connect the negative through a 100 ohm resistor with the battery negative. Okay. Now if I turn it on, it always comes with the backlight. Fine. The always on backlight will greatly improve its viewing angle and readability. Now I can focus on my experiments more rather than on turning it off to save battery every time. The softer backlight also works but it just makes it brighter and goes off around 10 seconds. Now I have to think of the charging. So I will connect this connector directly to the battery. Now to charge it, I will connect a lithium charger module in series with a traditional 5 volt charger. Now it's not charging the battery, both LEDs are glowing because of that 10 ohm resistor in series with the battery. Now I have connected the charging wire directly to the battery and the issue is solved. I will place some foam under the battery to hold it tight. Finally after all this madness, it's time to finish it. And the project is completed, it is working fine. Please consider a thumbs up if you like my idea. Subscribe to my channel to learn more about electronics. Thanks for watching, I will catch you next time.